Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Paris Air Show at this historic airfield, Le Bourget, outside the French capital, where our coverage is sponsored by Bell and Leonardo DRS. And we're here at the Boeing uh, Technology Superplex, for lack of a better word, in a new uh, cutaway of the 777X that the company is uh, developing to uh, d uh, try to dominate the long haul market. And with me is commercial uh, aircraft legend Randy Tinseth, uh, who's uh, the head of marketing at Boeing uh, Commercial uh, Airplane. Randy, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, it's another air show for us. I appreciate it very much, and welcome to our exhibit. Uh -huh. Very, very neat. We're sitting. Uh, you guys have uh, uh, these new Encore seats, right? So, uh, folks, uh, how many, how many abreast? Well, this is a triple seven X interior uh, mock-up. Uh, in economy here, we have ten abreast, and as you can tell, these are very comfortable seats. <laughs> Eighteen inch wide seat bottoms, um, and the triple seven X is going to be our next thing in terms of what we're doing in wide bodies, and it's been very successful so far. Uh, you know, certainly visited out uh, the facility and saw your wings uh, and other stuff you guys are doing there, and it's very impressive and a big investment for the for the corporation. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's start with the 730 uh, 737 Max. Um, it is an incident that has shaken uh, folks' confidence uh, in the company. Uh, there have also been stories of manufacturing uh, issues and tools and debris and parts. We saw that on the, some stories on the 787 as well as on the KC-46. Talk to us about where we are in return to flight right now. Um, Willie Walsh of International uh, of IAG uh, to put a big vote of confidence with the order for 200 MAX 8 and 10 aircraft. But talk to us about return to flight, where you are on the market, and how do you rebuild confidence that's been shaken, uh, both in the flying public but also even some ardent fans of Boeing. Well, I want to start by offering my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones who lost their lives on the Ethiopian and Lion Air flights. And we're very sorry for the loss of life. It's been a very difficult decision, I mean, situation clearly for them, for our customers, as well as us at Boeing. When we look at the 737 MAX, we're working very closely with the regulatory authorities to get that airplane back in the air safely. In terms of the process, we've been working with all of the regulators. The next step in the process is to go through a certification flight of the aircraft, and we're approaching uh, that potential here in the coming weeks. And at the end of the day, then, we'll have all the materials and changes to the airplane in the hands of the regulator, and they'll determine the timeline for there, from, that, from there on. Uh, in terms of return to service, in terms of confidence, we're doing a number of things. First, we have to gain the confidence of those regulators. We're working hard with our customers in terms of a return to service plan, almost a plan that looks like an entry into service plan. So we're in, we ensure that the airplane is reliable and safe as it begins its operations. We're working with our customers to get their confidence back and working with their pilots, working with their flight attendants, working with their gate agents, whatever we have to do. And then of course, we're working with our customers so we can gain confidence with the flying public over time and that's going to take time. Um, do you think that there's going to be lasting effects to this um, in terms of orders lost, uh, rework cost? Um, I mean, again, it's great to have that order and that vote of confidence, but it is a letter of intent at this point. Do you think that there's going to be lasting damage and you guys, that this was going to be a, a longer recovery phase, uh, for example? Well, well, clearly we're very um, excited about um, IAG's um, vote of confidence in this airplane. You know, Willie was here yesterday. He talked about his 18 years as a line pilot flying the 737. He talked about what he has done in terms of looking at the enhancements we're making to the airplane and his confidence in that. He also was very strong that when they take that airplane in 2023, as they, they may, according to the uh, letter of intent, that he's confident the airplane will be in safe service at that point, that they'll have confidence in the airplane as it, as it flies in the future. I think there's no question that we're in a market that tends to be very resilient. If we do the right things, we get this airplane into service. It proves to be one of the safest airplanes that's ever flown, as we expect. That confidence in the general flying public will come back. Um, you, uh, very few companies are as lesson learned oriented as Boeing is. Um, was the entire approach, I mean, was there a lesson learned? Because historically, you know, everybody knew Boeing as you grab the controls, you have full control, there's no intervening authority on that. Um, 
you know, what are some of the lessons learned already from this as you guys look to develop MMA? You know, you've got another uh, this bunch of airplanes that are in the intellectual and the planning phases. What are the lessons learned from this? Well, I, th I think when you take a look at what happened in the MAX incidents, um, the MCAS, the system on the airplane, provided more workload in a really heavy workload environment for pilots. And so we have developed software enhancements, changes to the flight deck, the manuals and training to help take some of that workload away. So in what we're doing with the airplane, coupling, uh, coupled with what we're doing with the regulators, we're ensuring that this MCAS system is not a problem in the future and it's absolutely the right thing to do. We're going to learn from this incident. We have a situation where we have a board level committee taking a look at the way we certify and develop pro programs. The FAA has another committee looking at how we do this as an industry. Any findings from either of those committees we can clearly develop, pull into our development and certification process. At this point there have been no findings that says we need to do things different but we're going to continue to watch, we're going to continue to learn and at the end of the day as you know we as an industry have created the world's safest form of transportation and we've been able to do that by learning from what learning from incidents in the past incorporate that into our knowledge and making the whole flying experience better uh, and you guys also have said you know angle of attack sensors and all of that is, is stuff that you guys are uh, working as well let me go uh, to the market a little bit um, you know, the analysts that we've been talking to are looking and saying, hey, you know, the A220 uh, and the new A321neo XLR really are going to put a lot of pressure on you. You know, that's an airplane, 250 seats that can go from Europe into the middle, uh, middle of America. Talk to us about how the developments in the market, what Airbus is doing and how you guys respond and trim your middle of the market aircraft, which has been under development and everybody's been waiting for mm -hmm. uh, a launch on it. How are you adjusting your plan to respond to the competition? Well, I'll tell you, the A321 XLR is something we expected them to do. They've been talking about it. It's been part of our plan and the way that they would react in the market. But the fact is, if you take a look at that airplane and you take a look at what our customers have been telling us over the last couple of years, our customers have been telling us to really address this middle, middle of the market segment. They wanted an airplane that was bigger than today's 757, about 25% bigger, that would fly about 25% percent further which means it's a 5,000 nautical mile airplane and frankly the XLR is smaller than a 757 and doesn't fly as far as a 757 so there's still a huge gap there to be addressed in the market does it address some of that potential NMA market I would say yes but just a sliver uh, and what are your uh, projections on the size of that middle market airplane well, we see a market over the next 20 years somewhere between four and 5,000 aircraft. If you can get an airplane that is really optimized for the marketplace, that market would come from the top end of the single aisle market. It would come from some of the bottom end of the wide body market. And frankly, if you optimize the airplane right, it would stimulate a bit of demand as well. So we're looking at a family of airplanes that would seat between 220 and 270 passengers that would fly 5,000 nautical miles provide wide body comfort with the economics of a single aisle. Right now we continue to work on the development of the program and we're working to make sure that we can get a business case that closes. In other words, to make sure that we can have a price in the market that justifies the cost we're going to spend. Um, where are, are, if you look at some of the air traffic trends, they are starting to trend down and there are folks who are looking at this both as a commercial as well as a uh, defense uh, downturn. Um, how bullish are you on growth of the market? It's slowing growth, still growth. What do you What do you think? And are you you know is this the start of a downturn that we're seeing? And how is that going to affect you at a time when you're returning to flight on 737 and all of this stuff is happening at the same time? Well, our expectation is that traffic will grow about five percent this year off of a very high base from a very strong last year, so it's still going to grow above trend. We think the capacity and traffic will grow pretty much in tandem, but the most important thing from our perspective is we expect our airline customers to generate about $28 billion in profit. That means that this year we're on the doorstep of a 10th year profitable growth for our customers. That's unprecedented in our industry. And when I look at the market, I see a market today that is more diverse and resilient than we've ever seen before. It is broader, it is deeper, it is more balanced, and as a result, that makes us bullish on the market moving forward. 
Um, do you do you get to that higher production rate on 737? You guys are what you you decrease to 42, if I recall. Are there plans to keep going up to 57 and then higher? Right now, what we're trying to do is make sure that we stabilize our production at 42, which means that some of our uh, suppliers are actually producing at the higher rate in order to fill in some shortages they've had. Uh, for example, CFM, and at the same time to build more engines so we have spare engines so when the MAX does return safely to service, there's those spares to make, uh, make available should they be needed. So our focus now is to produce at 42, stabilize at 42, and then determine where we have to go from there. Um, let me go uh, to the big side, uh, uh, big airplanes. Uh, Airbus uh, did make a little bit of a headline. Folks uh, saw the 330 uh, NEO as being something soft, but they managed to get an order on that. Um, how do you see the big airplane market developing? Obviously, you guys are on uh, 777X, and so use that as an opportunity to also give us an update on also your, you know, where the programs stand, where the competitive situation is, but where also you think the order book's going to be for this class of airplane. So if you look back the last 10 years and you think about single aisle airplane, planes, Boeing and Airbus have split that market in terms of deliveries about 50-50. So we both have very competitive product lines. Now when you look at the wide body market, that's been a different story. That's a market where we consistently sold about 65% of the airplanes in the market and we've consistently delivered somewhere between 60 and 65% of the airplanes. So when you're in a market and you're outselling the competition two to one, I think that speaks very highly of what we've been able to do. We have an extraordinarily strong set of passenger aircraft with the 787 family and the 777. And then we have one thing our competition doesn't have, and that is a very strong uh, uh, portfolio of freighters. In fact, we just announced a commitment for 777 freighters to China Airlines today. So that's a very, very significant movement. So I think when you couple our passenger airplanes with our freighter aircraft, you look at the incredible strength we have with the 787 and 777X, you take a look at the A350, which is a nice airplane. The A350-900 is doing well. After 12, 13 years of trying to sell the A350-1000, it's not going anywhere. And frankly, the A330-900, 800 airplanes that are small improvements to an existing good airplane, and our customers are choosing to go new technologies. So it's been struggling. Uh, let me ask you one last question, and, and one thing uh, that you mentioned is uh, Boeing certainly has had the advantage on the big airplanes, but on the small airplanes, it's sort of your 42, their 58, and there's this concern that you guys are going to get into a position where it actually makes it harder for you to compete because the structural dynamic then starts to favor Airbus. Are you guys concerned about that in terms of being able to get to that 50-50 parity on, on airplanes, on the, on the single aisle market? Well, clearly the situation in the MAX has complicated things, but as I go back over the last seven to 10 years, we've been delivering about 50% of the airplanes in the single aisle market, and it's nice to have a big portfolio of orders like Airbus does and like we do, but the fact is we're able to take those orders and convert them into deliveries much faster than they are. I think that speaks to the, the depth and breadth of our customer base versus them. So our focus is to make sure that we're right there with them in terms of deliveries, and I think we'll be able to do that, especially once the MAX gets back on its feet. Randy Tinseth, uh, who heads uh, commercial airplane uh, marketing at uh, Boeing Commercial Airplanes. Uh, Randy, always a pleasure. Thanks very much. Best of luck on uh, Return to Flight and uh, all the other programs in the portfolio. And I look forward to our chat next year. Thanks, Vago. Thank you.